for such a um, uh, thanks for James. Um, who do you normally go to the games with? Um, for home games, there's usually a group of us that usually go. Um, some uh, for away games, usually two or three of us will travel in a car. Um, usually, Keelan and Olivia would be one of them, and Caelan Burns as well. So, uh, we've been going for the last few years anyway. So, I did used to. Uh, I started off going to showgrounds with my dad all those many, many years ago. Well, I say that as if I'm really old, I'm not. <laughs> I'm only 20 years of age, mm. but back when I was young, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was busy. I've been to a lot. Um, what is the earliest memory of watching Saga Rivals? It's going back. A lot. It's going back to the the old probably the, the oldest one I, I I remember was I can't remember who Rovers were playing. It was at the showgrounds years ago, and um, I know it was years ago because the the bank wasn't even built yet, and uh, I remember where I was sitting in the. Uh, Trace Avenue stand, I could just see Richie Ryan had lined up a free kick and I watched it fly straight into the top corner. That'd be one of the earliest ones I have, it'd be one of the best ones that I still I still remember uh, from back then. Like I, I, I still remember all the players we had from when we played FC Mulder to having Bocco on that team and John Dillon and all Matthew Blinkhorn and all those players, so I, I'd have been in the, the younger bracket of a Sligo Rovers fan, but they were still they were, they were still great days, the final and everything back in 2010. Uh, do you have any funny stories you can share? About, about the Rovers team? No, uh, about away days? I don't know what I can say or what I can't just like, say. Just like in with we, fans in the you go or who you I used to there used to be a, a, a group of us yeah. and I remember we went to um Drogheda away back in twenty seventeen. I think it was the time when there was three teams going down. And Galway got the drop that year as well. And we were we were in Drogheda away for the last game of the season. We drew nil all and I remember the the Galway were playing Dundalk in M D C Park last game of the season. And it was a thriller. I think it was four three that game finished up. And but anyways, um, after the game, it was Toby Adamara Rowling's last game. So I mean, we, were, we were giving him a bit of jive about leaving. And we were um, one of the lads stayed behind to grab a jersey. And we were around forty minutes down the road. We actually thought that he had too much strength and he passed out. And we 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 uh, we were like. Uh, about four, a good 40, 45 minutes down the road, where is he? And it only clicked after about five minutes that uh, that we were done, that, that we left it behind in Drogheda after going and looking for, for him. So he had to pull the bus over and wait for a while, and we ended up bringing him, I think it was Theo at the time actually, who was the kit man before he became CEO, ended up going and um, giving him a lift back to the bus, and then we all travelled back together. It was a great trip though. But uh, yeah, that was one of the, the weirder ones. If you could bring back a former player in their prime today, who would it be? Well, you have such a mix of players to bring back. Um, like if, if it, like, you know, going back to those 2012, 2010 teams, they were absolutely rock solid. Like. Like you could always go with Gavin Pearce and Guinness back in their prime. You know, Alan Keane was great in his prime. But like when you look at the forwards you have, you know, Joseph Doe in his prime was just absolutely unbelievable. Uh, Joseph Doe, like, Richie Ryan as well, I thought was class. And you, you can't forget Di North, Mark uh, Quigley or Brian Cotero back in their prime as well was absolutely unbelievable. and. Uh, you know, and I, I'm, I forget Pascal Million as well. I remember his first game in the showgrounds, and he absolutely tore up the pitch. He's so live field, and like him in his prime was unbelievable. Same with Bocco. I actually don't know. I I I'd probably be stuck between Joey and Doe, or probably Bocco. I think they were just class players. They were just strands of both where where they were at the time. Yeah, it'd be one of the, either of those two. 
Uh, what is your greatest moment supporting Sligo Rovers? <laughs> As a young person, winning the league back in 2012. Um, you know, the I was only 12, 13 at the time. Um, I wouldn't have experienced it as much as many of people in this town would have at the time, but we were still young. I was still there. I was still able to remember winning it. Still able to run on the pitch. I still have the pictures with Lillian and Dino and Justin Boney and Barry Clough as a young fella in, in the stands that night. Um, if I, you know, those few years afterwards were were hard years uh, for Rovers. You know, we weren't doing well. Um, proud moments. W w you know. Staying up that in that drop, 2017 drop was tough because it was nothing past them in that drop with Galway and all them, and it was only three points to separate us at the last game. So it was tough, you know. I'm also proud of the community club aspect. I think Sligo Rovers is by far. I don't care what Bohemia says or any of those teams. We are by far the best community club yeah. in the League of Ireland, without a shadow of a doubt. The money we are able to raise to still stay as a full-time club is absolutely phenomenal. How we never went bankrupt during how COVID. We, how we never did and how we raised, you know, and you know people will take the piss saying we signed Junior and we signed up, you know, players to, but those players kept us up. Those players brought us the fourth spot in the league and they gave us that European spot. So, you know, they did really well at the time. And, and like going back to those days being at Sligo Rovers, like when you're there and when you're being interviewed, uh, and, and you're asked to think back, you're like, I actually, you know, there's so many aspects of why you love this club. And like, say if you were stuck for a lift to a game or something, you'd know somebody who'd go and give you a lift. You know, you, you, if you're ever stuck and you want to go to an AA game, you always knew there was a few people that would give you a lift. You know, it's a real community club. It's class, and it'll be something that it's it's something that I do love. And you know, Rovers have helped me on personal levels for different events and stuff, and they've given donations and everything. So you know, they they are an absolutely class club, a real role model for other community clubs, even in the junior leagues across all divisions across the across the world, across Ireland. You know. They're great for what they do. Um, who is your favourite manager down the years? <sighs> Who's my favourite manager down the years? Um, obviously, Barakov won us the league. Um, Paul Cook got us, you know, the top and everything. You know, have to credit Liam Bucky for where he is now. Um, I did also like John Coleman when he was in. I thought John Coleman was a really nice, humble manager. He wasn't yeah. there long, though, was he? He wasn't there long, no. And it's a pity he wasn't there long, because I would have liked him there for just that bit longer. Um, if I, you know, I, I, looking at what Buckley has done with this team, you know, we have how many? Is that that's up to ten? Academy graduates in our team now. Yeah, we're extremely young. With the sign of Seamus Kyo and look at where we are. We're joint top of the league. You know, we've gone and signed Greg Bulger and. Did you just sign? Was it signed Seamus Kyo? We signed Seamus Kyo yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We signed Seamus Kyo yesterday. So you know that brings our quality up to ten for local academy players, which you know you have to give the credit to. Him. So Jay Little gave those people as well. He gave a lot of people credit as well. Um, obviously, I, I like Buckley now. Paul Cook, though, was just, you know, a, just vocal, real nature of dressing was his dressing room, you know, yeah. for what he did and how he did it. <sighs> Probably it, it would have to be Paul Cook, you know. Yeah. Um, um, you or you used to be part of the Forza group, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, I used to, from yeah. the beginning, how did that start? Well, when when I was really young, I wasn't I wasn't over in Forza. <laughs> uh, I wasn't I wasn't over in the Jim Avenue stand. I always used to sit with family over in the Tracy Avenue stand, and I uh, I I still 
like then obviously when you when you get a bit older and you go with a few friends and you hear the noise and the banging and, and, and you know as a young player you go over to see what the crack is and you know ever since I went over before and I, I loved it I absolutely loved it great bunch of lads I thought a few of the lads can get a bit stick every now and again for you know for this and for that but like there's a great group of lads there who support their club in and out every week pay for uh, displays you know out of their own pockets and um, you know how we add the atmosphere to the showgrounds like remember the, the, the semi-final against off the top of my head the semi-final against the dock there the FBI Cup we lost 1-0 and um, the stand was absolutely packed from around quarter past seven and we were singing from around 20 past seven the teams were still warming up like and like especially like we, I've been standing there since 2013, 2014, and like those 2015 years weren't the best of years. And like you see fours at their lowest, and you look back, and the, the, the place was absolutely hopping. And like it was unbelievable. It's such an experience when over there singing and you know, having the crack with lads your own age as well, and you're able to go over and you know, we, adding atmosphere to the showgrounds is, is one of the best aspects. and be fair, the Jinx Avenue stand allows you to do that. It allows you to get that atmosphere with that small roof and that small stand that that's at the time to magnify or you know make, make the singing louder. You know it, it's class and you know the, the, we we do get stick every now and again and you know we, we can have the odd few people over there but you know what, they're all, every one of them are great. You know they're good. You know they're good lads. You know they put money into the club day in day out as we always do we always sponsor players we always throw money in to all the fundraisers and you know there's a good core group of lads there you know you have young fellas who come and go but like you know we we, we welcome everybody over there and, and it, you know it's just to create that atmosphere in the showgrounds that is badly needed and, and we will be there and, un, until whenever and, you know, it's great to have them in there because it just adds that that rising atmosphere to the showgrounds such a great stadium as well, you know. Yeah, what's the um, what's the greatest goal you've ever seen like a local score? It would, it would. Uh, I've tried, but I haven't got long with the video. Have, have a tea. Yeah, just a tea. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just a uh, little bit of milk and one sugar, please. My greatest goal. There's a fair few to pick from. Um, I I'd say Eldings. Um, Eldings goal there to make it three two up near me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Danny North is up there as well. That skill from Joey and Dove, just to chip it over the wall. But I think El I think Eldings is just. Just yeah. more spectacular. I'll, I'll probably get a stick for saying that, but I think to be fair, that goal shouldn't have been allowed, really, should it? Chip over the wall. It probably, <laughs> yeah. whether whether he had blown the whistle or not or whatever, you know. But to whether uh, talk about uh, that goal, the 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 call, it was, it was the of it was just yeah. class. But I, I I'd say Elding's goal would have is is probably the best goal. That, you know, one of one of my first memories that goal at Richie. I'd, I'd love to find it because it's an absolute, you just watch the ball and I mean square of the top corner, you see it go straight in. It, it was, it's one of the best views because I remember I was down in the front row and you know the little barriers in the stand and I was looking under and you could just see a direct line to the top corner from where the ball was and when he stood up and took it, it was, it was class but no, El Elling's goal will, will, will take it, you know. There's been big goals as well, like we've had big goals, you know, like I, I, I would consider those goals we scored against Dundalk and Oriel to be big goals because that gave us the win yeah. over the current champions Dundalk in Oriel Park uh, to get, make sure we solidified that fourth spot. Like you know, yeah. they were great. They were big goals for the club. Uh, yeah. You know, but probably the, the greatest. I'd say Elding's, Elding's at the top of the list. What do you think of the um, new plans for the stadium? The redevelopment of it. 
great. It's needed. Um, I I think the the plans have been there for a while. Um, I I do have to credit the likes of. It's about 17 million, isn't it? That's how much it's going to cost. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's just about 17 million, isn't it? The, uh, you, can yeah. just, uh, you can ask the question again, and then I'll, I'll say it again. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, um, what's, the, what's the... Um, Plans. Uh, what do you think of the plans being made for the stadium? It's great. Um, it's needed. Um, it's great for the region more than it. and uh, you know it's going to benefit the club. You know, uh, I s actually sat down for about an hour and just read through every little nook and cranny of that document, and it's great because you know th I think it's around four million, give or take, that needs to be actually physically raised over seven years. Which could be done, you know, yeah. if it's done right, you know, you can't be asking fans all the time to dish out money twice a year. That's not going to happen. You need to put stable infrastructure for fundraising in to allow us raise that four million. Obviously, the European money is going to help as well. So, you know, investing, if you get 200,000 from, from Europe, investing, investing 160,000 into the stadium and 40 back into the team that's that's how we do it because for us to keep getting that money we still need to have a good team so we need to be just as good and stable on the pitch as we do off the pitch and you know i have to credit tommy higgins i think tommy higgins coming in has been such a breath of fresh air to sligo rovers you know he, he is a business head and i think we needed a business head in to get us over the line of having this say, new stadium in, to making sure that Rovers goes a long way, to making sure that we can fill whatever 6,000 capacity now or whatever it's going to go to, to have four stands, uh, to have offices outside, to have restaurant bars, official merchandise shops, to have offices and, and gyms and proper toilets and you know to have infrastructures uh, changing rooms for you know the Astro. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I think I've, I'm not hundred percent sure, but I think the council are gonna put a bit towards it as well, which is which is fantastic. Yeah, they they have said that they'll be switching stuff over and back, and we'll be having you know the council on board. You know, it's great that they brought the rugby club on board as well yeah. for the all few games because then hopefully we can qualify for grants for multi-purpose sports, uh, which is where I think they were going with it at the start. And you know, the, you know, the fact that the council go in on it as well, you know, at the end of the day, we need we need money yeah. to facilitate this. And, you know, I'd say the office buildings, the councils can use, you know, and everything like that. I like the idea of, yeah. as you go in, I think on the left, you have the museum and the yeah. club shop as well. The club yeah. shop there is a brilliant idea because at the moment, most stuff, you have to kind of get a match days but yeah. now it's like open seven days a week to go up whenever you want. That, that is the prime thing. But even for like, you know, obviously staff will have to be employed, excuse me, employed for all that type of stuff. Yeah. But staff would need to be able to congregate over and back between the, excuse me, between the offices to make sure that, you know, we have a shop that's able to get there. Like the Shamrock Rovers have a shop that's available six to five days a week. So. We need to be met now. Obviously, we're we they don't own their stadium, so like you know, we this will be ours. You know, this the the council have to be involved. This the showgrounds is owned by the people of Sligo, so we own our stadium. So the only people who can change that is us. Um, I think that's about it.